What do you get when you cross a High Elf and an Eldar? A High Eldar. Welcome back to Anvil of Doom Miniatures, my name is Dietz, and over the past few months I've had a thought. What if the end times never happened and some of those old world races kind of advanced and got new technology and went out to the stars? Now we all know I'm a bit of a sim for high elves and I also do love a classic Eldar model. They're really growing on me lately. So I was thinking to myself, what would happen if I crossed these two aesthetics? Using the high elves white, blue, silver and gold on a classic Eldar model would be a really fun way to bring this vision to life. Now I've had my eyes on a few Eldar models recently because I eventually want to go down that rabbit hole and paint some up, especially their fast Ears. I really love their fast ears, they look so good. But I need to decide on what mini would be extravagant enough and bold enough for my future high elf. And I couldn't go past this classic Eldrad Ulthrone model because it has the ornateness and boldness that I was after. This model will kind of be like my future version of Teclus or something like that. Now I'm sorry to all the Ulthway lovers out there, this guy's getting the Ulthwan treatment. He's going to basically have the opposite colours that you're used to. Let's get straight into it. And I have been having problems with my white primer recently, so I've swapped over to Wraithbone and had no issues at all. I'm gonna blame the high humidity and extreme heat on where I live. First up are the base coats, and on my trip to my local hobby shop, they had a couple pots of discarded army painter paints going for a couple dollars. So I grabbed some of these blues here, which I threw on the cape, and to my surprise, they were extremely opaque. I swapped these out for a techless blue instead because I didn't wanna sit here all day applying multiple coats. For my whites, I used Administratum Grey as my base coat and added that to the inside of the cape, to the face mask and the shirt. I like using Administratum Grey because it's dark enough for my base coat, but not too dark that it overpowers the white that I'm going for. Now I did want a small pop of colour other than blue, white, silver and gold, so I thought adding some Gene Stealer Purple to some areas would give it a nice bit of difference. Plus, I tend to use purple on some of my high elf minis, as the cover of the 6th edition army book really inspires me. For the leathers, I went over with my usual dried bark to the bag, the straps, the boots, but there were a lot of pouches and bags in different leathery areas, so I wanted to break them up a bit, so I used corn red on some of the red leather areas, I used scrag brown for the little pouch on the front, and I also used a bit of wraith bone on the staff just to clean up some of the grey that I spilt on it. Obviously, high elves have iconic silver helmets, so this futuristic guy will have the same. I carefully go over with some gun metal to the helmet, and the little crest on the back. I also apply some of this to his little talisman, the staff, and the tips of his boots. I put down some Gehenna's gold to his face mask, the armor, and his jewelry. Now there's a lot going on with this guy, and I was starting to think the base coats would never end, and in typical me fashion I had to pick one of the most heavily detailed Eldar models around. After the gold I slapped on some evil suns to most of the gems, not all of them because I wasn't sure what colour I actually wanted to paint them. Part of me wanted to make these pink as I thought it would pop a little bit more but obviously that would be veering too much off the high elf path so I stuck with the red for now. Using a really skinny brush I threw down some corn red just in the eye socket area. Now it's time for some washes but before we get into that maybe hit the like button and subscribe I'd really appreciate it and you can stay up to date with all my videos that I've been making lately. Okay, so the shameless plug is now over, and I use some Null Oil all over the gun metal, and I make sure this pulls around the little gems on the helmet, just to give it some readability. Gollum and Flesh goes all over the gold, and I always like to water this down a little bit, as it can be a bit strong, and it will brown the gold up too much if you use it straight out of the pot. I just apply this carefully all over, being super careful around the lighter colours, because I hate cleaning up. I then use some Thin Down Magos Purple over the Jean Stealer Purple on the belt and the little tassels. And then I apply some Frost Heart Contrast over the pipe on the back of the helmet. I used this contrast paint recently on a 10mm mini and it worked a treat so I've been itching to use it again. To finish up the washes on this high Eldar I used some Thin Down Ultramarine Blue all over the cape and the robes. I did have some issues of getting it to pull where I wanted it to and I blame that on me rushing. Okay, so it's time for some highlights, and at this point you notice that I was jumping around a fair bit, and that's because I was getting impatient. I had a bit of a late start on this model this week, and life kind of got in the way, so I felt like I was a bit rushed. Now whites are always tricky, and I use a mix of Administratum Grey and Ulthwan Grey, and just apply this to the little face part on the helmet, super carefully, and then move on to glazing it to the inside of the cape. I then use pure Ulthwan Grey, and apply that to a smaller area and then add some white to the mix for a final highlight. If I was going to give some advice to someone who's painting white for the first time, I would simply say do not panic. If it's starting to look scrappy, simply just throw your base coat over it and start over again. It's paint, it can always be fixed. 
Now I'm itching to get this helmet done, so I go back over the helmet with some thinned down gun metal all over, but I try to avoid the null oil that's built up around the gems because I want to maintain that darkness as it adds a bit of readability. I then glazed on some pure silver to the top of the helmet and anywhere I think the model will be catching some light. And today I'll be doing something a little bit different and adding an edge highlight of silver and white because an extravagant guy like this needs all the bells and whistles. I use this mix of paint to all the hard edges on the helmet. You've probably seen me do gold a few times on this channel, so I'll keep it brief, but I just go back over with some thin down Gehenna's gold all over. Then I use some polished gold over the top basing areas. And on last week's vampire video, I tried a new highlight which I thought was pretty great, so I mixed up one part polished gold to one part silver and just did a small highlight wherever it needed. I'm a big fan of this new highlight, so I'll be using it all the time from now on. Time for the eyes, so I grab my Army Painter Fine Detail Brush and some Evil Suns and I just add that to the front half of the eye. I then use a small amount of Troll Slayer Orange over the top, then a tiny amount of Uriel Yellow to the front of the eye. To finish, I just use a dot of white to the back of the eye. The last larger highlights I have to complete are the blue robes and there was a reason I was leaving these until last because it was a bit of a make or break highlight. I go back over with some techless blue to clean up some of the stains that the wash left and again I probably should have taken my time with this wash. I then mix in some lothan blue to the techless blue and start adding these highlights to the raised areas of the robes. I then went for a pure lothan highlight towards the bottom of the cape and I just use that like a glaze. I then mix in some blue horror to the lothan blue and highlight it again and then used a pure bit of blue horror for a final highlight. Now there are a few inconsistencies to this cape with the blues that I used and I wasn't too happy so I just used a blue wash to try to tie it all together a little bit more. After that was finished I moved on to the purple highlights and I just used Jean Steel of purple and then slowly mixed in some white to this mix and built up those highlights. As this purple gets lighter in colour I just cover less and less of an area. There are a lot of different leathers to get through on this guy. I just use my usual Doomble Brown Scrag Brown highlight for the leathers, a Corn Red Wazdaka Red and an Evil Suns for the red leathers and I mixed in some Scrag Brown and Bone White for that little pouch on the front. And now I'm just going to add some colour to that blue hose in the back of his helmet and I just use Blue Horror and then mix in some white for a final highlight. Now I was saving the weapons till last because I didn't really know how I wanted to tackle them. Part of me wanted to go fully extravagant, do power blades, do different coloured gems, but my inner high elf had to pull me back into line. I had to keep this one on track with the high elf theme. But maybe one day I'll paint up some vibrant looking Eldar for the channel. Let me know if that's something you'd like to see. I give the face of the staff a coat of blue horror and then a good wash with some frost heart. I felt like it needed some more contrast so I just used a darker blue wash around the outside of the face. For a nice bone look I used a wash of 3 parts contrast medium to 1 part skeleton hoard and just applied that to the shaft of the staff. Then I added some simple highlights of blue horror and mixed in some white to highlight the face. And I just went over the tips of the features with some of this. To finish off I just slapped on some bone white over the staff rod just to clean it up a little bit. So now we're on the home straight, I glaze some Griff Charger Grey on the blade and I do this with an extremely watered down mix of Griff Charger Grey and I build these highlights up slowly. Once I'm happy with that, I then glaze on some silver on the opposite side to give the blade some shine. I then use a mix of silver and white and do an edge highlight on the blade. I always find this step tricky and without fail I will always make a mistake here and there but I can just clean it up with silver or just another glaze of Griff Charger Grey. Now I kid you not this guy has around 60 gems on him and I will never ever complain about the number of high off gems I have to paint. Well maybe not complain for the next few weeks. I went through and applied Evil Suns as the base coat for each gem and then I glazed on some black to the top right. And this can take a few coats to build up this darkness. I use a coat of Wild Rider Red down the bottom left and a final mix of Uriel Yellow and Troll Slayer Orange to a smaller section of the bottom left. And of course I finish up with a nice dot of white up the top right. Alright so the gem marathon is now complete and I did go back over and fix up a few little bits and pieces here and there. I tend to do that from time to time because I find it hard to put the model down and finish. But anyway, here is my high elf themed Eldar.
Thanks so much for sticking around to the end, guys. I really appreciate it. Now, I did put a post up on my channel this week about voting for what you'd like to see next. So make sure you go check that out and vote, and I'll see you all next time.